Hey everybody, Matt with Valera here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and edit the server PBOs. This is a really common question that we get. A lot of people like to do some advanced configuration on their server, so they like to edit the mission PBO along with the DAISY server PBO. Uh, you could do a lot of really cool customizations, so it's a, it's a good thing to edit if you, if you know what you're doing. It's a more advanced type of configuration, but if you're, if you're confident in doing it or willing to learn, it's definitely something to give a try. Uh, we've tried to make this process as easy as possible for you. Uh, we've done quite a few different things that give you the ability to edit it uh, a little bit easier than you would get in most other circumstances. The big thing is, with most servers, what you'll have is your MP missions folder that contains the mission PBO, and then you'll have, like, let's say, just a folder called at daisy server that contains the actual server PBO. What we've done instead, we have a specific directory that houses the PBOs for all of the maps. And in those folders, they're already decompiled. So really all you have to do is edit each individual file itself, save it. When the server starts, it'll take everything in that directory, compile it for whatever map you have installed, compile it into the appropriate PBO files, and put them where they need to go. So you normally, let's say this we didn't have it set up like this, what you would need to do is download your mission file, use a program like EliteNIST to extract the PBO, make your modifications, go ahead and compile it back into a PBO, upload it back to the server, and if there's an issue, you got to repeat the process. We've taken out a lot of that work and made it so you go in, edit, save, start the server. If it doesn't work, shut the server off, edit, save, start the server. So we've made the process quite easy for you. So to find the PBO files, what you will do is click on File Manager in the control panel. When that loads up, you will see a folder here called Valero Code Custom. That's where everything's housed. And I should actually say that this specific tutorial expects that you're using the private hive option. If you're using the Valera hive configuration, you do not have access to the server files. This is only if you're running a private hive and have the MySQL server installed. So once you go to the file manager, you have the Valera code custom folder where all of the decompiled PBOs are held. So the easiest way to get in there, uh, you can either expand the tree over here on the left if you know exactly what folder you're going for, but for demonstration purposes, I'll just go into the root of that folder. And you can see here, all of these in this first folder are the DAISY server PBO files. And we'll just open Shinaris as an example. And here's the decompiled PBO. So let's say you wanted to, you wanted to go into the, the system folder and make some type of modifications to the server monitor. All you have to do is come in here, click the little pencil icon, and you get this nice little editor. You can make whatever edits you want. You know, go in here, add some additional code, uh, insert any scripts or any additions that you want. Go ahead and click Save. And that saves that file right then and there. If you want to edit the mission file, it's the same thing. So we'll back up here a couple levels. And now we're back in the root of the Valera Code custom directory. And down here at the bottom is the missions file. So we'll open that up. And you get the same concept. You have a separate folder for each individual mission. For, for all the different maps. Now we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll look at Lingor as an example. And this is more or less what you'll see by default. There's always a description ZXT, there's always an inet.sqf and a mission SQM. Uh, some of the maps have this player on pause. That was a compatibility thing. I believe it was when one, Daisy uh, 175 came out, I believe, somewhere around there. So let's say you want to go ahead and modify something in your inet. Click the edit. And you got the whole file here. Same concept, go ahead and add something, click save, it saves your changes. So what will actually happen is when the server goes ahead and restarts, it'll run a tool that recompiles these PBOs and moves them where they need to be. The PBO sits in this folder in the at daisy server, at daisy chinera server, and that's what you'll get. So let's say, uh, just to show you that it gets recreated, we're going to completely delete that file. So it's gone, no PBO. So let's go over here and start the server up. And we'll let that go through the startup process. Part of that process is creating the new PBO files. And we'll just refresh this a couple times until it appears, and there we go. That's the brand new PBO. Any changes that you made are now included in there. This makes the whole process a lot cleaner and a lot easier for you to edit. There is one addition to that. You'll see here on the home page of the control panel, you have a rebuild server PBO. That button does the same thing, but you don't have to start the server. 
So let's say just to make sure you wanted to verify that your edits are being put in there. You can make your edits and just run that button and it'll compile the PBO. You can download the PBO and extract it yourself to verify everything's there. In most cases, you don't need to use that. Uh, every single time the server starts, the PBOs are recompiled. Really straightforward, really simple. Hope this help explains how the process goes. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Again, my name is Matt with Valer. If you ever want to discuss it with us, jump in our TeamSpeak, ts3.valer.com. Thank you for watching.